loosening of border controls has led to some very expensive search and control measures with the painted apple moth and now the fruit fly and in other Morton. cases we've got yes, Mr. Megan Woods. Now you've got a call. You didn't call. The bell rang. Megan Woods. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, Mr Chairman, and I'm very happy to take a call on the Biosecurity Reform Bill, a substantial piece of legislation that seeks to amend the Biosecurity Act of 1993. And essentially, one of the things that this bill seeks to do is to bring the legislation up to date with the technology that is available in terms of biosecurity in New Zealand. As my colleagues have talked about at length, that Labor does support this bill, although we do have a couple of concerns that we've outlined, one of which um, my colleague Damien O'Connor talked about earlier today was the gov government industry agreements, and this is a concern for us. The other concern for us is that you can have the best legislation in the world, but if you don't properly resource it, it's not going to work. And some of the things that my colleagues have talked about while we've been debating this bill is the lack of resourcing that we're seeing in this area of biosecurity. We're seeing that Wellington Airport hasn't had a sniffer dog working there since October last year. We're seeing that there's cuts. And this is of concern to everybody because we support the efforts to, to increase our biosecurity. Because like most people, well, like everybody really in this House and most New Zealanders, that we know that historically New Zealand's biosecurity and protecting our land-based primary production, our agriculture, our forestry, forestry and our horticultural industries is absolutely crucial to our economic survival and indeed our economic development. Not only has it been incredibly important to us historically as a nation, but we see in Labor that it's still important to us today. It's very much part of our present. And this bill does recognise the vital importance of biosecurity to our marine environment, to our indigenous flora and fauna, and also to human health. And I think it's interesting that we started debating this bill last night, um, immediately after um, the, the reading of the, um, the EEZ legislation, um, where we were seeing where we were seeing the House talking about how it is that we could control our exclusive economic zone. And what we hear, have here is a piece of legislation that seeks to extend into that, into that zone of the exclusive economic zone. So the purpose of this bill, as I said, really, is to bring it up to date, to take into account the technologies that are available and that have been there since the passage of the legislation that was passed in the 1990s. And this present bill that we have before us now really goes back to when Labor was in government and the scare that the Varroa bee mite posed to an entire industry. And sadly, since we've seen the scare that the Varroa posed to the honey industry, we've seen several other scares that members have talked about during this debate. We've seen the PSA incursion into the kiwi fruit industry um, a $75 million problem in the finding of the Queensland fruit fly in Auckland. All, th all actions that pose significant threat to New Zealand's economic well-being. The fruit fly alone could destroy a $3 billion a industry a year in the horticultural industry. So these aren't just, these might be very small organisms or very small insects, but they're not very small problems. These are things that we need to protect against. And this is why Labor the more than doubled the spending on biosecurity between 1999 and 2008. We raised that spending from $94 million to $187 million. Then in 2003, Labor initiated the biosecurity strategy, and this was a very good piece of work. This strategy emphasised the critical role, and this is what's really important for me, because this is a strategy that emphasised the critical relationship between science and biosecurity, and that science needed to underpin what we were doing in the area of protecting our borders and in terms of our whole biosecurity system. This strategy identified four expectations of science in the field of biosecurity. And it, it, it emphasised that the science should be closely involved in the development of any strategy, that the purchase of science should be integrated across providers who are working in this field, and that the investment in science should be long-term to ensure maintenance of key capabilities.
and that the priority for research to improve biosecurity is understood. And as someone who has worked in the research industry before entering this House, I have seen very much that biosecurity was at the fore of thinking in terms of our horticultural and our primary production industries. Mr Chairman. Uh, Dr Megan Woods. Thank you. New technologies, many of them that have been developed under this increased funding that I've, uh, that I've sketched out, are now being used in defending our borders. And this legislation that we have before us now actually will enable us to make greater use of these new technologies. Ensuring a secure, a secure biosecurity system from pre-border to peace management must be underpinned by the science that I was talking about to support the social, the cultural, the environment and the economic values that are important to all of us as New Zealanders. And that we must ensure that science continues to underpin our approach to this system. And our science in this area has a very strong international reputation in fruit fly protection and in eradication techniques, the use of baggage um, securing X-ray technologies and fumigation technologies and pesticide technologies and molecular diagnostic techniques. These are all things that New Zealand, New Zealand scientists excel at and that we do very good work at and we need to be able to use these technologies in the defence of our borders. And we have examples of this technology not only being used to protect our borders, but we also have very good examples of some of these technologies being commercialised and there being spin-off economic benefit to the New Zealand economy. We have Sniffer Tech that was developed by the CRI Ag Research that went on to be a very useful t technology. And biosecurity is a, is a really salient example of the importance of investing in science to our economy economy right across the broad spectrum of how it is that we look at our economy. Our economic future is dependent on this and we must continue to innovate in this area. And as I said, the purpose of this bill is to enable us to use these innovations, these new technologies and these new bits of scientists. And the Biosecurity Act as it stands now does not reflect these significant advances in technology that have taken place over the past decade and that we anticipate that will continue to make greater advances in. The Act actually requires, the present legislation requires that some of the acts be carried out in a manual way when time has moved on and we actually have technology that could do a better job at this and actually do more to protect our borders. For other functions, there's uncertainty about whether the available or future electronic technologies and systems can be used to, to support the, the prevention of biosecurity risk. And we must tidy that up, and that is why Labor is supporting, one of the reasons Labor is supporting this bill is because it does precisely that. We need that legal certainty over the use of technology and over the use of electronic devices in defending our borders. And MAF need to have that certainty to improve and target and manage the risks at our borders. Visual inspection, as is required in many ways now, will not pick up the organisms that pose the threat, whether they be bacteria or virus such as PSA. We must have a way to detect these, and we have the technologies. We must be able to use them. And that is why Labor is supporting this bill at this reading. Thank you. Uh, Reno Turricartney.